Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at the Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. Is this the best possible cooler for the money? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video we'll be taking a look at Noctua's NHD15. This is an upgraded version of the original version. This is now the Chromax Black version for those of you that don't like the, uh, the beige and brown, which, let's be completely honest, isn't the greatest look inside of modern PCs. So Noctua have upgraded and updated the model to allow it to be a all blacked out finish, which actually looks really, really nice. Also, for those of you that want to add a little bit of bling, there are additional accessories you can add to give it a little bit of color. So let's go through the packaging. We'll see what we actually get inside. We'll do a quick installation on our Ryzen 9 3900X, do some temperature tests, and then come back with my final thoughts. Now, obviously, this review will not be as scientific as uh, the results from maybe Hardware Unboxed or Gamers Nexus, but certainly I'll be giving you my honest take on it. So let's take a look at the packaging first of all, and this is the new updated packaging, and they couldn't help themselves, but there still is a little bit of the brown on the box, which uh, is part of their logo, so what can you do? So as it says on the front, this is the Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black Edition, and it's the Chromax Black Design, PWM support, low noise adapters, and excellent component cooling. Which you'd expect for this kind of money. Now talking of money, in the moment here in the UK, the cheapest I could find this was around about £75. I'll try and put some affiliated links in the video description so you can check out the prices for yourself. Amazon does tend to have it in stock quite regularly, but the prices do tend to be a little bit more expensive, but obviously you do get included in that your free delivery if you're a Prime member. Moving around to the side of the box, we've got a picture of the side profile and also some more information about the award-winning design, and also we've got some measurements there. On the back, again, it goes into more details, as they generally tend to, about the Chromax black design, etc., the colour customizations, the widened fin stacks, all that kind of stuff. Now, that is actually one of the upgrades over the original D15. So, we've now gone from 140mm wide to 150mm wide, so that gives you a little bit of extra cooling performance. And also the fin stack has been rearranged slightly to allow better airflow and the heat pipes are actually rearranged slightly also to give a better overall airflow and also cooling. For those of you that are worried about compatibility with your particular motherboard and chipsets, RAMs, etc., there is a amount of flexibility on this. Even though it is an absolutely huge cooler, you do have the option of mounting the fans in various positions and also being able to raise them or lower them accordingly depending on your RAM, VRM heat sinks, all that kind of stuff. You can, obviously, if you want to, you can run this in single fan mode with just a fan in the middle, but that is going to take away some of the performance. Also, another really good feature of this is the mounting. This is using the SecuFirm 2 mounting system, which uh, most of you have probably seen by now, but essentially it just makes it really easy to fit on pretty much every processor or every chipset on the market. Moving around to the other side of the box, and we've got some more information, some more technical information, which we'll get some zoom in now, so you can see things like your heatsink specifications, the fan specifications, and also the list of components included in the box. But you don't need to read that, because we're going to find out now. Okay, so that's enough jibber-jabber, let's see what's actually inside the box. So first of all, on the top we're greeted with the accessories box, so let's take that one out, and we'll take a quick look through here, see what we actually get. So it does give you a list on the front of the box of what is included, so we've got your accessories, your SecuFirm 2 mounting system, and AMD and Intel backplates, all that kind of stuff. Open the box, this is uh, the usual kind of thing from Noctua. For those of you who had a Noctua cooler before, you kind of get used to how it all it works and how it's all laid out. So let's start at the bottom section. So we've got our kind of securing or accessories kit. So in there we've got some uh, cooling paste. We've also got the low noise adapters for the fans. And also there's a fan splitter as well. So if you've got a motherboard which only got one CPU fan header, you can use the included splitters to divide the signal to the two fans that you've got installed on the cooler. Also, there is a couple of spring clip mounts for attaching the second cooler, and also there is the Noctua case badge. Next up, we've got the uh, long screwdriver, which again, if you've used the Noctua cooler before, you would have seen one of these. You will need a long screwdriver to mount this. That is one of the slight downsides of the mounting system. It is a little bit tricky when it comes to getting the screwdrivers in, but essentially they've given you this, so it should be pretty straightforward. Next up in this section, we've got our mounting system. So also you've got your instructions as well. So there's instructions for LGA 2000X, LGA 11 5X, and also that will kind of cover the new LGA 1200 as well. For those of you that are wondering, this will fit with the new LGA 1200 chipset. So if you're looking at a new Intel build, then it's gonna be absolutely fine for that as well. The one we're more concerned with at the moment is the AMD one, being that AMD pretty much rules the waves at the moment. So that is what we'll be concentrating on in this particular review. 
Although, having said that, let's now take a look at the Intel mounting system. So we've got a pretty much usual deal. So we've got the metal backplate, which is clearly labelled on the back to say what it is. And also you've got the additional brackets which attach. And also you've got your mount insulation. So in that you use the black spacers and you've got the thumb screws and all the other spacers, that kind of stuff. If you do want to see how this works on the Intel system, then please do let us know in the comments. I'm not entirely sure how much of a market now there is actually for Intel stuff, but it, certainly if you're interested and you want to see it, please do let us know in the comments and we'll try and make it happen. Over on the AMD side, things are a little bit more simplistic. So we've got two mounting brackets, which are clearly labeled three and four. So if you're using AM3, use number three. If you're using AM4, use number four. Sadly, no AM5 quite yet. And with the mounting hardware, we've got four screws and we've got two sets of spacers. So the white spacers are used with the AM3 kit and the grey ones are used with the AM4. So pretty straightforward. So that's the accessories out of the way. Let's take a look at the actual cooler itself and what else we get in the packaging. So we get some foam. And in this section, you can see there is, it's really nicely packed actually. Everything's really nice and secure. I'd be amazed if this actually ever got delivered damaged, but if you have got one of these and it's really damaged, again, let us know in the comments. I'd be really interested to know because I think it's almost an impossibility unless the UPS guy was playing football with it. So in this box section here, now we've got our two major components. So the first of which is the additional fan, which is the Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. This fan is rated at a maximum RPM of around about 1500 RPM, lowest RPM around 300. And you can of course use the low noise adapter and that takes the RPMs down to around about 1200 RPM, give or take about 10%. Taking a closer look at the fan, as you can see, it's uh, pretty much uh, what you come to expect from Noctua, extremely high quality. We've actually got the rubber pads, the anti-vibration pads pre-installed on this. Again, you can if you want to get the Chromax kits uh, in various colors and you can replace those to whichever color you want. So there's a red, blue, green, yellow, white, etc., etc. So if you want to, you can easily change those out. The fans, the blades themselves, everything has been designed with airflow in mind and also quietness. Now at full load, this is around about 24 dB. So again, it's pretty much silent. You're unlikely to hear this against the rest of the components in your system, especially if you've got a particularly hot graphics card or maybe a slightly older power supply. As per usual, there is that kind of dimpled edge around the inner frame of the fan itself. And again, this is all made in their special source resin mold. On the back of the fan, it tells you more about it. So it's the Chromax and it's the NFA15, uh, PWM, Chromax Black, and we've got a nicely braided cable, which is uh, really nice to see, and it terminates in a four pin PWM connection. Finally, let's take a look at the cooler itself. And this is actually quite a weighty bad boy. Uh, although it does seem smaller than the Corsair A500, which you can check out the review up here. This certainly is a little bit smaller as well. So this has actually got a maximum height of around about 165 mil. So if you're concerned about how much depth you've got in your case, that is definitely something to look into. There is a little bit of adjustment on the fans, so you can lower it a little bit, but the highest point of the heat sinks from the base plate itself is 165 mil. So do check that before you order one. So this is the cooler itself. And yes, it is, uh, it is a big boy. There's no denying that. Although saying that it could be, um, it could be actually a lot bigger. They've managed to make the heat sinks quite squat actually, so they're quite wide uh, and not particularly tall. Also as well, you can probably see already, there's a cutout just on these corners here. This is to aid things like RAM compatibility and VRM compatibility. Depending on which way you mount it, they are pretty much, I think, looking at it, it does look to be pretty much universal both sides, so you can flip it around either way. Although on the top, there is actually Noctua markings actually in the heat sink. So if you want to make it look proper and obviously under closer inspection, do mount it up the right way. Also, as you can see, there are a ton of heat sinks in here, or heat pipes rather. So you've got six heat pipes in there, which all come down to this nickel plated copper base, which is uh, really nice to see. I really like how they do that, how they manage to make it copper, but yet still have that nice nickel finish on it. And it has been uh, machined particularly well and is yeah, pretty much a mirror finish, which again is a really nice look. You can see here that the mounting brackets are already installed, so you don't have to worry about all that stuff. The main concern is when you're actually installing is there's a screw here and a screw here, which you gain access to from the top side when the fan's removed. So you screw down through to actually secure it. Now the two point securing method in some people's minds may not be the best because you may not get even coverage, but they designed it in such a way that it does seem to do a very good job. And obviously it wouldn't win as many awards as it did if it wasn't any good. So in order to install it actually in your computer, you are actually gonna ha have to do some disassembly to start with. So all we need to do is to pull the side clip off and do that on both sides. And then you can release the fan, pull that out entirely. 
And then if we look down through, you can then gain access to the screws to actually clamp it down onto the Secufer mounting plate. But overall, I think this is actually a really cool looking tower. Hopefully it's going to be a particularly noticeable upgrade of my previous Nocturne cooler, which again, you can see the reviews of up here. At the moment, temperature wise, I've taken some readings to see what it is. So essentially that is what I'm going to be comparing this against the NHU-12S. Hopefully it's going to be uh, considerably better and potentially a little bit quieter, although really that is an extremely quiet cooler as well. But certainly, let's get on with it and uh, see how well it does. Okay, so we've done the testing, uh, we've done the installation, as you've probably just seen from the B-roll, and actually I was pleasantly surprised. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think that this huge monolith of a cooler was actually going to be as easy as it was to install. And actually, I would say that it was actually easier to install than the NHU-12S, even though they've got very similar mounting systems. I did find with the D15, one of the easiest ways to do it, especially if you're doing it in the upright position, is to hold the back plate in position and actually get one of the screws and one of the spacers and the actual bracket Tighten that up first of all, that holds the plate in place. Then just tighten it up so it's almost tight. Then you can just swing that bracket across, put the spacer in behind it, put the screw through, and job done. You don't have to worry about the back plate falling off the back if the PC is in the kind of vertical position. Really simple to do, and actually I would recommend installing it that way. It seemed very, very easy. Installing the actual main tower itself actually onto the base plate after, again, was very, very simple to do. With my standard screwdriver, which I normally use, I didn't use the included one, put it on there. Attach the top one first of all, because obviously gravity and what have you. So you do the top one first, a couple of turns, and then just then do the bottom one. And yeah, very, very simple. Now the one thing I did find extremely annoying was actually getting the clips on the fan. Putting the middle fan in, I did put it in, and I got to a point where 
that's it, I'm screwed now. Because the graphics card slot is so close that there is virtually no room between the graphics card itself and the cooler. So I had to then take the graphics card out to put the spring clip back over, which was an absolute pain in the backside. And for those of you that are tweakers and like playing with your system and you're swapping stuff in and out, it is gonna be a nightmare because realistically now to take the graphics card out, you're gonna to have to get a very long screwdriver and try and sort of manually poke at the release tab to get that graphics card out especially if you've got a system where the graphics GPU slot is very close to where the cooler resides. If you've got a lot of space there, obviously it's not going to be a problem, but I think for most people, if you're on Micro ATX or Standard ATX, you are going to find that the graphics card slot is going to be extremely close to the bottom end of this cooler. So do bear that in mind. Unfortunately, there's not a great deal you can do about it when you've got coolers of this kind of physical size. There's not a lot you can do to actually get around that fact. So again, if you are one of those people that are swapping stuff out all the time, do bear that in mind. But if you're like most of the people where you just want to install your stuff, get on and then just enjoy your games, enjoy your video editing, just get on with your life, then this is going to be absolutely fine. Just thought I'd make it kind of obvious that this isn't the sort of thing which you can tweak and mess around with willy-nilly. It is huge, it is big, and it does take a lot of room on the board. So let's talk about temperatures though. Obviously, comparison-wise, I've got a few coolers here which I've been messing around with, and obviously we've got the Arctic AIO, the 240. Also, we've got the NHU-12S, which is one which has directly come out. And of course, we've got the D15. Now, the difference between all three is um, not huge, if I'm completely honest with you. So if you just want something which is going to be performing relatively well and gets the job done, then actually the NHU-12S is a good option for the Ryzen 9 3900X. Does an absolutely fantastic job, but could do with bringing the temperatures down a little bit. If you want to bring them down a little bit and you want to go the water cooling route, obviously not sure can't really help you with that. So the Arctic 240 mil is a good option. And actually overall will give you slightly lower temperatures overall than the D15. But what you do get with the D15 is that simplicity of installation, kind of, and or simplicity of use. So you don't have to worry about water, you don't have to worry about bubbles, you don't have to worry about radiator placement. All of that is taken out of the equation. Also, something else which really you could consider is actually what graphics card you're using in your system. If you're using a modern 3000 series NVIDIA card, you do have most of the card overhang is blowing hot air straight to the top of the case. So with a air cooler, you're gonna be pulling that hot air straight into the fan blades. Whereas with an AIO, you don't have that issue. You can just have it go straight past and obviously being a sealed unit, the water is gonna be separate from all that system. So there's kind of swings and roundabouts depending on what your setup is in your system. This one is about five degrees less in the low and the high. So this one came in around about 37 degrees and highs of about 75, 77 in that kind of ballpark. With the D15, we got about five degrees off the top and bottom of that. So we're looking at around about 30 to 32 degrees on the bottom end and around about 73 to 75 degrees on the high end. So not a massive, huge amount of difference, but certainly there are differences and it's roughly about five degrees isn't entirely scientific, as I said towards the beginning of this video, because we don't have the kind of area to do that. This is basically a living room, so the temperature does fluctuate a little bit. Essentially, our temperatures in the house were around about the 22 degrees mark, and the temperatures were as accurate as I could get them. But essentially, if you are running a high-end Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and you want to do some overclocking, or you just want to tame the beast a little bit, then certainly the D15 is certainly worth a look. It is, at the moment, around about 15 to 20 pounds cheaper than an equivalent AIO cooler of the 240mm variety. And the Arctic one is generally one of the cheaper ones on the market. So if you're looking higher up, so maybe some of the Corsair models, that kind of thing, you are going to spend considerably more. So if you do want AIO performance, but you don't want the hassle of water, bearings wearing out, motors running out, all that kind of stuff, and you want a cooler which is probably going to last you the test of time, then the Notchwood D15 is a really good choice. Now, one of the questions really a lot of people are going to be asking is, if you're spending this much money on a air cooler, how long is it going to last you? Well, essentially, the only thing you'd ever need to replace are the fans, and they've got a six-year warranty, as has the unit itself. So realistically, you're guaranteed six years out of it. Now, we do have the new upcoming AM5 processors, and we don't know what the mountains are like. Noctua previously have been extremely good, and as mounting systems have changed, they have incorporated fitting kits, etc. So realistically, I would say this is a very likely contender for use on AM5 systems. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't confirm that at the moment, but certainly it looks very likely. 
Okay, so to wrap this one up, essentially with the D15, you're looking at essentially AIO temperatures, but without the complexity. Also, you do have to consider the fitting issues because this is a big old beast, but certainly it is a little bit smaller than some of the other coolers like the A500 from Corsair, etc., which this one actually does beat in most tests and certainly it is considerably quieter. So if you want a quiet, cold system and you don't mind spending a few extra quid for a little bit of quality, then an Ultra D15 certainly gets my vote. So that wraps this one up. Let me know in the comment section what you think of it. Would you prefer an AIO, a 240mm AIO, or would you go for a D15? Or perhaps would you go for the NHU-12S? Is that your uh, cooling system of choice? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.